Are you ready to learn? Because my super experienced guests are ready to share some really valuable information. Make sure and listen all the way to the end to get help and support. So let's start with the best audio experience. What's up, guys? Welcome to our show. Today we discuss about SEO strategy and implementation, how you can find your way to get traffic and sales. I'm so excited to discuss this topic with Steve Top. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks, and totally thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, a big pleasure. I often see your content, so I'm excited to learn more, to get new insights. Uh, before we start, just tell about yourself, experience, background, why you have so many guitars on your background, and anything <laughs> that related to your hobbies and job as well. Well, I've been playing guitar since I was 16, and I have a lot of gray hair, so that should uh, mean that I've been playing for a while. Um, you know, I've been doing SEO since around 2010. Uh, worked for a lot of agencies and then in-house companies. My last in-house company was FreshBooks. Um, grew the traffic there to 50,000 clicks per day and ranked for keywords that are 300,000 search volume in the number one position for about two years. So um, had a lot of experience there that um, I also started my uh, newsletter SEO notebook, which emails one piece of strategy every week to the list. Uh, the list is about 15,000 subscribers now after three years. And um, I'm an SEO consultant, is my main source of income, but I'm also branching out into a few other things, um, you know, as, as time wears on. But um, yeah, I just really love SEO, uh, focus on the strategy. Uh, mainly clients are usually in B2B SaaS, but I do have some B2C clients as well, but pr primarily SaaS clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. Valuable. Okay, let's talk about uh, ACO strategy. Can you tell how to find the right and craft the right strategy? Because I see when the masters usually uh, use tools like SEMrush, Ahrefs, Serantian, uh, Keyword Planner, many others, they see high volume keywords and think, oh, how much traffic I can get, you know, how many sales. But uh, in that, they will compete with Wikipedia, many other websites. Uh, I often have such clients who uh, come to me and tell you know i can't get results for a long time for a few years uh, i tried everything but when i check out their strategy it's useless you know without any uh, deep analysis just uh, thinking about high volume so can you tell how to find the right strategy well you want to know what you're going after first that should be very clear to you um, you want to know what keywords are going to drive the most traffic for you. So the, one of the things that you can do initially is to see, you know, are there paid ads there, right? Um, are those people who are running paid ads, are they running those uh, for a long time? If somebody's been bidding on a keyword for a year or two years, that's a very good indication that that keyword is going to be valuable to you because you really don't know how valuable it's going to be until, you know, you're starting to drive traffic to it. And, um, you know, the fact that people are bidding on those keywords for a long time probably means that uh, it's a good one for you to go after, too. And then beyond that, you actually want to see how does the SERP look for those keywords, right? Um, it, are those keywords going to be, um, you know, achievable for you? Or like you said, is there going to be, you know, five, you know, mega sites um, ranking for those keywords and then there's no room left for you, right? So. It's about, um, you know, gauging the realistic, uh, whether or not those opportunities are realistic for you. And then once you've made that determination, <clears throat> you know, how you're going to, or if you're going to go after those keywords, you, now you have to decide how am I going to approach this, right? So one of the uh, main things that I always stress to my clients is that you're not going to um, rank number one for a keyword just because you have one really great page on it, you need to have, you know, topical authority. You need to be, you need to be talking about all aspects of, of that, uh, that topic, not just your money page, but also, you know, providing informational content to go along with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, valuable. Uh, can you tell more about uh, pillar type topics, uh, how to uh, find pillar topics, unite them, uh, submit call to action, for example, e um, even if you have traffic, it doesn't mean that you can uh, convert this traffic, so you need to lead uh, audience to e-commerce pages. So uh, tell more about pillar pages, how to create a strategy. Yeah, so 
I mean, e-commerce is a whole separate thing, so I'm not going to really get into that too much. And to be honest, e-commerce is not a type of SEO that I really enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. So I, I usually don't don't touch it unless they have a content strategy to go along with it. Um, but um, to find, you know, pillar pages, um, you a need to be able to assess your competition. Uh, what are they um, writing about? Which pages for those uh, for your competition are getting the most links? Um, and then analyzing those pages and, and you know determining what can you do better than them, right? Um, so I always think competitor research is one of the first things that you need to do when you are um, going after um, a, a client, and uh, you know it's 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 going to be hugely important and valuable to you to understand what are their strengths, but also what are their weaknesses when it comes to actually producing that type of content. Um, your Google Search Console data is another um, very valuable um, tool for you to determine uh, what are the other topics that you can write about for your keywords. So if you have your money page that's, you know, ranking for um, or wanting to rank for, um, you know, those high CPC, high competitive keywords, um, take a look at what other keywords are ranking in the very low positions for those money pages. And oftentimes you're going to find um, really great topics um, that are, you know, ranking on page eight, page nine, page 10. Uh, when you look at the average position data in GSC, sometimes you'll find some really, really great topics um, to come out of that. So that's another place that you can look to sort of build out that pillar content. Yeah, I agree with that. I think uh, if you have traffic uh, visibility, it's better to start from Google Search Console to find keywords that uh, Google uh, right now understand uh, on your website. So yeah, why not? Okay, let's talk about uh, content creation. Can you tell how to find a responsible copywriter today? Because, you know, uh, 10 years ago, I had a team of copywriters who wrote about anything. Uh, about weight loss, about finance, about uh, vehicles, anything, you know, but uh, during some time Google changed approaches today. Uh, it's better to cooperate with experts who can write about one specific topic, uh, direction. So uh, can you tell your methods how to find responsible writers who can share valuable insights and something new and unique? Uh, well, to be honest, I'm very blessed because I work with a team for a long time that, uh, mm -hmm. that I don't have to worry about that and they take care of most of that for me. Like if I have a client in a new niche, um, he just goes and finds, you know, somebody on a, on a job board. There's a few, <clears throat> there's a few, there's one called Cult of Copy Job Board, uh, which is on Facebook. Um, I believe to enter that group, you must submit a haiku. <laughs> it's kind of mm -hmm. weird, but like they, that's what that's what the question is when you have to join that group. So just have a haiku ready. Um, but uh, they're generally very good copywriters um, on that group. Um, one thing you can do when testing a writer is just to say like, you know, here here's an assignment. I'm going to give you. $40 and you tell me like what you can do for $40, right? Just give them like, say like, here's how much I'm going to pay you. And then let's see what they come back with, right? Whether are they writing, you know, just a $250, sort of 250 word article, or are they able to do more than that for, for that, for that cost, right? That way that you can see like what, what they are sort of going after. And that tip actually comes out of Glenn Alsop's uh, blueprint course. Um, that uh, that I've I've taken, and uh, he has that tip in there, which is a pretty good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. I never thought about that. I use different methods, but uh, I need to try this one as well. You know, <laughs> another <laughs> another one that I've done in the past as well um, is uh, instead of asking for a writing sample because you don't really know where that writing sample is coming from. You don't know if it's Jarvis or they're taking that from somewhere and just tweaking it or Quillbot or whatever. But one thing that um, you can do is uh, give that writer a poorly worded paragraph. So like you are put, you're, um, putting mistakes inside the content on purpose. And then you give it to them and you say, put on suggested edits on, on Google, Google Docs and then correct this to make it you know, uh, read properly. And that way you can kind of see the mistakes that they see 
and uh, and then you know instead of asking them for a writing sample, you're just getting their editing eye um, uh, uh, in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Uh, okay, let's talk about how to create uh, the task or requirements for copywriters. Because you know, for example, I I see when copywriters usually rewrite existing content. It's like to watch. Uh, the movie with the same plot if you watch the same movie so uh, i don't know uh, it's interesting or not but if you watch three movies like this five movies uh, you can feel uh, it's the same uh, you are not satisfied with that it's the same like to read uh, all, uh, similar books uh, because most people are looking for something new and unique uh, it's not only to get 100 percent with uh, uh, some tools that will show 100% uniqueness. It's more about sharing uh, valuable, unique insights. Can you tell about creating the right task for copywriters to explain them? I'm not interested in pre-writing. I'm interested to get something new for this niche, uh, for this topic, uh, and share uh, in, in your copy. Yeah, that's a great point. So uh, I think what you're getting at here is that the tools like Surfer or phrase or pop or whatever you're kind of using are going to give us um, uh, suggestions that are going to make us look like the other articles already on the SERP. But what you're getting at is like, how do you tell a, a writer to create unique content, right? So um, I'm going to say uh, two things about this. Um, one is based on my note uh, about, um, uh, it's called, um, oh boy, um, information game. Uh, so information gain is basically teaching the search engine new new content, new new uh, new information. And uh, one thing that you know when you're doing research uh, to you know construct your article, um, you're going to be looking at um, you know you're going to be googling for answers, right? You're going to be reading blogs, getting statistics, getting all these different things. But one thing that most people are not googling are uh, different file types. So everybody's looking at websites when they're doing research. But you can also do something like your keyword file type doc file type PDF, and then actually get information from these docs, PowerPoints, PDFs, and then include that information inside your content. And it's very unlikely that your competitor is doing that, right? Your competitor is just Googling those keywords and looking at all the other websites for their information. But if you start looking at what, avail what else is available on the web in these different file formats, uh, you will probably end up getting information that they're not uh, finding in their own research. So that's a, that's a good tip uh, there. And then um, there's another guy who I uh, really enjoy following uh, whose name is Eric Lancheris of uh, My Traffic Research and uh, another tool called on-page.ai. And Eric is a really smart guy and I, I really respect him. And uh, he, he had an example um, about adding new information to a SERP. And this was his example. He said, like online, on, if you go to like Apple's website or Samsung's website, they're going to tell you it takes two hours to charge this cell phone, right? And that, mm -hmm. that, that's a piece of information that Google already understands. But you might say something like to charge an iPhone to 50% takes one hour, right? So now you're giving new information uh, that is not just like, you know, the standard information from Google, but you're saying from, from Apple, uh, but that, that it takes, in fact, just one hour to charge it to 50%, right? So that's, that's how you can take, you know, one piece of information and create something new out of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Uh, I have the question about finding the balance uh, between the length of content. Of course, it depends. It depends on user intent, on many different factors. But I see when the masters analyze big websites like Amazon, Apple, many others. But you know, it's interesting. For example, on Apple. If I open apple.com, I see simple skimmable content uh, with a few quotes, uh, a few words make difference, uh, something like this. Very simple to consume. On Amazon, uh, I see uh, almost everything that I need to get from specific uh, 
products, reviews, uh, descriptions, uh, uh, pictures, videos, uh, a lot of information. So I don't need to search uh, for more information on other places. Can you tell how to find the balance? Of course, big brands uh, probably don't need SEO traffic. Uh, uh, for example, Amazon usually gets 90% insight uh, on Amazon uh, and 10% uh, of sales are coming from other resources. Uh, Apple, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, of course, these websites have SEO traffic, but they don't rely a lot. They think more about branding, uh, about their audience. Can you tell how to find the balance between uh, short and long content? Um, well, I would say that, like, usually I want to analyze competitors, but just because competitors have 2,000 or 3,000 word articles does not mean that you necessarily have to. What I would say is when you're analyzing the competitors, look at what topics they're covering, right? So look at their heading structure and and just count the number of topics that you want to also address, right? And then you don't have to create 3,000 words just to address those six topics. You could probably create less. And you could also experiment by initially launching the same amount of topics and then maybe some additional ones if you have, if you can do that. But you can launch with a shorter article and then the same amount of topics and then you come back and re-optimize that content later with the Google Search Console data um, as, as something that to, to potentially, you know, um, expand later on. But you don't have to launch with the, the large sort of, um, you know, content right at the beginning. Just make sure that you're covering the same topics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. Uh... Let's talk about how to retain uh, audience longer. Uh, that uh, I don't know impacts user experience. For example, you know when I uh, read books from Jack London, uh, I can read uh, the book like eight hours, forget about uh, meal, about water, about anything, because uh, you know I can feel that I'm the part of this journey, you know, uh, adventure, uh, and. Um, uh, I found many other great books, uh, for example, Josh Sugarman wrote an interesting book about how to retain audience longer readers uh, that uh, he wrote his book like uh, 40 years ago, but uh, even today it's more important to retain uh, audience longer, to consume the entire copy, uh, if you want to improve, of course, user experience. Uh, can you tell how to do it? Because uh, most uh, content, uh, you know, are bounced for a few seconds. Uh, we have this bounce rate like uh, 50%, 80%. Uh, it's the same with video content on YouTube uh, when people, 80% uh, of people can skip watching videos for uh, 20 seconds. Uh, can you tell how to retain the audience to catch their attention, to hook their attention, and give a solid reason to consume until the end? Um, am I able to share my screen? Because I can show yeah. an example from, from one uh, of my clients. Yeah, you, you can share your screen, but explain for uh, podcasts, uh, for uh, listeners. Okay, I will. Um, I'll do both. So um, let me just... Uh, so the, the website that you can go to, is called brainstation.io. And then if you mm -hmm. skip to the bottom, this is a company that um, uh, offers like high-end boot camp courses. So like $15,000, $20,000 boot camps for how to become a web developer and stuff like that. And um, they have all of these different career guides. And if we look at one of these on the left-hand side, um, there's this uh, side navigation. And each of these articles on the side are all highly related to how to become a web designer. And what ends up happening is the user comes on this page and they see all of these related articles on the left-hand side. The bounce rate goes down because they, they can see um, that there's a bunch of relevant content to them. And every time they click on one of the, that left-hand side navigation, they're taken to a new article and then they're followed by that same navigation again. So this mm -hmm. really dramatically decreases the bounce rate and also um, enables the time on site to be much higher. 
uh, because all everything you're greeting the user with a bunch of information that is uh, is very relevant to them and whatever page they came on, whatever page they uh, they entered this um, ecosystem in, they're going to be uh, greeted with the same left hand navigation, um, no matter uh, no matter um, which page they're they're on, right? So they'll they'll just stay on this this section of the website for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I I like this user experience. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh... Uh, let's and and I, I worked on, so I worked on that I worked on that client and um, the traffic value for all of those career guide pages is five hundred thousand dollars per month. Mm, nice, nice, awesome. Uh, uh, I'm interested about uh, the most important SEO algorithms. Uh, and I found, you know, uh, I uh, often speak speak with many SEO experts, and someone can tell me uh, content is the most important. Uh, uh, who is good people in building or PR can tell. No, without things you can't rank your website. Uh, uh, who um, you know who has a foundation like development? They tell me about technical optimization. You need to increase site speed. So we have no one opinion, and uh, it depends on the strong side. Can you tell your the most important SEO algorithms where you pay more attention, especially if you have limited resources? For example, uh, you have X budget, and you can invest this X budget to content creation, link building, technical optimization. What would you choose? Uh, great question. Tough question because I don't know what the budgets of the other competitors are going to look like. Um, but I think your content is still the main pillar. Um, if you don't have content to address the query, you simply can't rank for the query. So you need to have your content as a top priority when you are, uh, you know, creating your pages. And then as a user, that content has to load, right? It can't take 15 seconds to load the page. But in general, if you're working with a smaller budget, your website's probably not going to be as complex, or at least it shouldn't be. So hopefully you don't run into um, too many, um, uh, I'm not gonna, you, you can, get, I'm just seeing a question pop up on the screen. I'm not gonna read while I'm talking. Um, uh, you know, you you uh, you. Hopefully, your website won't be too complicated that uh, your core web vitals and your site speed are 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 not too slow. But if they are, it's it's definitely worth uh, bringing that up on the mobile page speed and core web vital scores. Um, and then, you know, your links are going to be determined based on how many links your competitors are building, right? Um, if if nobody has links, you don't need links. If if everybody has them, then you're going to need to to you know, be be smart about your link building first of all, but you're going to have to uh, you're going to have to have links to compete with them. So um, you know, content number one, right? You simply you need content to be able to be relevant for the query, and then um, you know, making sure as a user when you enter that page, it's it's a decent experience. You know, open up an incognito window and just ask yourself, is this a good experience? Check, check the page speed scores, check the core web vitals and do your best to, to improve those. And then analyze your competitors for their link profiles and determine whether or not link building is something that is helping them rank. And if it is, there's your answer. You have to do link building as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By the way, uh, we have the question about social media, um, uh, and I like this question because you know uh, the last time I pay uh, a lot of attention to non SEO methods uh, to get uh, much better results with SEO, especially uh, with websites in finance, crypto niches, uh, because these websites need extra traffic and uh, i see when uh, you have uh, good organic reach on social media uh, high engagement uh, you can uh, get much higher results on google as well because google pays attention uh, to trust authority many other factors can you tell about uh, this question uh, what kind of uh, non seo methods is better to use uh, to improve ranking positions and if you can help uh, with this question, uh, how to get engagement on social media? Yeah, I think, um, you know, social media, maybe not like a direct um, ranking factor, but things that can influence uh, that. 
Um, personally, for me, um, you know, choosing the right platform and dedicating yourself to, you know, only a, one or two platforms, I would say max, maybe three, um, is going to focus uh, you on building a relationship with your connections. So for me, primarily, that's going to be Facebook and LinkedIn and it's Facebook groups specifically, um, like SEO Signals Lab that I'm a part of and, and participate often. Um, obviously, when you um, post, don't post links in your post, post just words. Uh, words um, tend to get the best engagement. Um, I even find that adding a picture on LinkedIn um, sometimes affects um, the the overall the reach and that just posts um, you know with like hashtags or tagging companies or tagging specific people um, in there uh, works well. Consistency is a huge part of it. Um, people need to see you in their feed a lot. The more they see you, the more they're going to engage with you. Um, the more they're going to contact you for business if that's a thing that you want. Um, you know, those are some of the things that I, I pay attention to personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love it, love it. Uh, I found on your LinkedIn profile uh, that uh, IHREPS rank your uh, newsletters to the seven best marketing newsletters. Can you tell more about your newsletter? What kind of benefits or value can you bring in your newsletter? Uh, and uh, give a solid reason, me and my audience, to subscribe to your newsletter after this podcast. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So um, SEO Notebook has a unique angle. Um, there have been a bunch of newsletters that have uh, been inspired, let's say, by SEO Notebook and fully encourage anybody to start a newsletter. Um, the basic idea is that um, I have a notebook in, uh, it started in Evernote, but now it's in Notion. And uh, this is where I document all of my strategies, right? So anything that I come across in my work over the last three years, I put it into this notebook. And then every week I select one strategy from the notebook. And then I, that's the focus of my content for that week. Um, so, you know, in, in general, it helps me stay organized. Um, it helps remind me of all of the different tactics that I've done over time. And as I do my work with clients, um, I'm taking inspiration from those notes all the time. And, uh, and we're, you know, in fact, implementing um, those strategies that, uh, that I've, you know, come up with um, over the last three years in there. So, um, yeah, it goes out every Tuesday at 930 Eastern. Um, and it's completely free. And if you subscribe, you will uh, hopefully benefit from from the strategies that I'm working hard on on producing every week. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice, guys. You can find the link to uh, the newsletter in the description below. Yes. SEO uh, notebook. Oh. Yeah, I have the a question podcast. about uh, well, another aspect. You know, uh, for example, if I learn something, I can forget about new insights for a few hours. Uh, and I see uh, when many students uh, uh, who learn a lot over learn, they do not learn, don't implement. And, you know, uh, in some time, this knowledge can be obsolete uh, uh, or uh, it's useless. Uh, I think today it's more important to practice. Can you tell, for example, if I learn from your newsletter, from other resources, courses, how to implement ideas because uh you know uh for example uh, i love learning but i spend more time uh by practicing analyzing testing because nobody knows exactly what actually works for a specific project it takes time uh so uh tell your ratio between learning and acting great question i love that that is so important um you can easily get distracted in just learning seo it never ends, you know, you can spend days and days inside of Ahrefs analyzing, you know, all a bunch of interesting websites. And at the end of that, you know, a few days, you have done zero to actually uh, help your, your client or your website um, rank, right? So it um, is a great point. And I feel like in my own personal life, and this extends you know beyond just ranking websites but also running a business um i know that i'm being effective when i'm just moving the ball around right i'm 
asking somebody, I'm delegating to all these various people, I'm following up with various people, I'm actioning on a daily basis and putting ideas into execution, right? Um, I, I don't, it's not like I keep a track of how many I do per day, but I know that when I sit down, the best use of my time is to tell other people what to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and, and obviously documenting that and giving them a, a, a SOP or in many cases, giving them one of my notes, um, you know, is, is, is how I document that for that person. And, uh, and, you know, as if you are the website owner or you're the SEO manager or you're a business owner, um, your, uh, your, your value should, and basically if you're the brains behind, behind the website, uh, with SEO, your value should not be in doing the physical work adding the entities or integrating the GSC keywords, all of those things, your, your main value is deciding what is going to make the impact and then giving that to somebody else to actually execute it and then QAing that work at the end. Um, I would not say, so there's, there's multiple things that you can end up wasting time in. You can waste time in learning, you know, week upon week, and not doing actually anything for the clients or your own website, but you can also waste time um, in getting too immersed into the weeds and not looking at the site on a, on a whole, right? If you are the one who's, um, you know, using a tool to refresh the content, it, you know, you may only be able to hit like a few pages a day, right? But if you are the one delegating that to multiple people, you could affect more pages on your site with that reoptimization, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. Uh, I have the question about uh, SEO intuition. Uh, you know, many SEO specialists rely on data a lot. Yeah, uh, we can use IHRFs to get this data. Uh, to spend time with keyword research to craft the right strategy but in the end nobody knows what actually will bring results and i often see on social media uh, i can post uh, a lot of uh, valuable content i can feel it's valuable but uh, social media has own algorithms and uh, disengage but some of posts can uh, be viral like to get plus 100k views and i didn't know before that that uh, this post can get uh, these results uh, i just uh, consistently po uh, post all this content can you tell about seo intuition uh, for example uh, when you don't rely on data but rely on your experience and can feel okay it's better to take this topic not this one because i can feel that we can get much higher results with that what do you think? Yeah, I think SEO intuition and SEO mindset are maybe the most important thing that you develop over time. That's very hard to teach because I can teach a person how to do on page or I can teach a person, uh, you know, strategies for internal linking um, and they can learn all of those skills. But let's say a new client comes on board. They don't know where to start. They, they don't know, you know, what are going to be the quick wins uh, for this client. And that can really, I think, only be learned over time. And you may need at least a year until you're able to sort of take a new project and actually construct a game plan that's going to make sense, right? So SEO intuition um, is something that needs to be developed and, uh, you know, W w use your eyes, right? Like don't, don't forget, don't sit. You know, Hrefs is great. I use it every day, but don't sit behind Hrefs analyzing a website. Look at it with your own eyes, compare it to websites that you like go on a big site like nerd wallet or uh, fit small business and look at the, you know, the, all the amazing things that these, you know, top level affiliate sites are doing and apply those to your to your site by actually looking right. Um, the SERP is another place that people don't look often enough um, when you're evaluating which keywords you're going to go after or after you've done keyword research and you've determined these are some great keywords to go after. Definitely, you know, 
make sure you're, you're, you're searching um, on the SERP. Like if you're targeting the US and you're in a different country, make sure you're using a proxy or a tool like Nightwatch Simulator to, to actually look at the real US results and, uh, and, and determine whether or not you, know, you have a, a fighting chance to rank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, valuable. Uh, I have the final question, uh, probably two final questions. Uh, uh, let's talk about lean building. I know some websites, webmasters who don't use lean building at all, but get a million traffic. I know lean building is uh, probably, I don't know, uh, many years ago, that was like uh, the first or the second uh, SEO algorithm. Uh, but today, uh, some webmasters ignore it uh, to spend all this budget that they can uh, spend with link building. They usually spend with content creation. So they can create uh, better content, uh, uh, more content, uh, and uh, get ranking positions. Uh, and I check out a few of such websites and found they have a strong benchmark they have uh, authority probably they don't need link building at all uh, can you tell how to find the balance or uh, how do i know uh, do i need link building and uh, how to choose the right link building strategy yeah um well you know google officially said that links don't count as much so we should just listen no i'm just kidding uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um there there's a you you raise a good point so um the, the nerd wallets of the world probably don't need to do a ton of link building anymore because they've gotten to that authority site stage and you know they publish an article and, and the next day it's ranking on page one right so um mm -hmm. there's going to be certain sites where you don't have to do that but if you're starting out you need to establish yourself because google is just going to look at your content and say okay this is great but where's the proof that you actually know what you're doing or where's the proof that other people are linking to you right so it's going to be important um but i was in um a mastermind in nashville um called the mastermind mansion and um, ted kabaitis uh spoke at that uh that that get together uh, that mastermind and what he kind of said made a lot of sense um, in terms of at a point it doesn't make sense to keep link building because if you think about just like google's old like page rank right there's still some form of page rank even though they don't publish it anymore but to get to pr1 you need let's just say hypothetically you need um, to be PR one, you need 10 links. And then to get to PR two, you need a hundred links. And then to get to PR three, you need, you need even more. There becomes a point in which it's just impossible, no matter what the budget to move up to like PR six, PR seven, PR eight, those, those things are not going to happen uh, by virtue of you going out and building or buying links. Right? So you can get yourself to a certain point but at some point that you know becomes too big and you need to kind of look to either build your brand or you're just happy staying there and you know improving your on page improving your site speed improving your internal links and all those other lever levers that you can pull mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh steve and my final question uh let's imagine you started from scratch without any experience knowledge skills what will you do today to learn more about seo <laughs> Good question. Um, to be honest, I just got off a call with somebody who I'm going to teach from scratch um, and possibly do a course um, on how I would teach them SEO. So I'm, I'm actually just thinking about that in the back of my mind right now. And I'm uh, meeting with them on today's Friday. I'm going to meet with them on Monday for the first session for that. Um, so what would I do um, for that? Oh, it is a very tough question. Um, I think I would have to build my own site and learn by doing. Um, that would be the best. Learn enough uh, on before you take any course or anything. Just join a Facebook group like SEO Signals Lab. Read everything that you can in there. Get to a point where you can ask better questions because at first your questions are going to be like so silly and broad that you're, you're not going to get a useful answer about that, but work yourself up to a point where you're able to ask good questions and then ask those questions in a group like that. And people will start responding and then 
based on the questions that you're asking, you're going to be asking those questions so that you can connect the dots. And then the more dots, more questions you ask, the more dots you're going to be able to connect. Uh, but, you know, don't neglect being part of a community because that can really shortcut your learning versus you're just stuck on search engine land and search engine journal and probably doing nothing. Yeah, got it. Well, I agree with that. Uh, it's like, I don't know, uh, for example, if I read a hundred books, how to play soccer, I never beat uh, Cristiano Ronaldo or Lionel Messi because they prefer to practice, to train their skills than uh, to learn how to do it. It's the same with any niche. It's better to practice, to do something than uh, just to learn. Uh, learning is good to get ideas. You I would say um, also, you know, getting a job at an SEO agency is also a great way to learn. That's how I learned. Um, I had, you know, two SEO managers um, during the early 2010s that I sat beside them and just asked them every question I had. Right. And mm -hmm. having somebody, um, you know, if I would say join an SEO agency, but join an SEO agency where you have other people that you can learn from, not where it's just you, right? So um, that was a invaluable experience to me and something that gave me a, a very good footing uh, in which to build upon. Nice, nice. Uh, Steve, it's a big pleasure to get on my show, to learn from you. Tell our audience how to reach out to you, how to learn more about you, how to follow you. Yeah, so uh, best place to follow me is on LinkedIn, Steve Toth, T-O-T-H. Um, I'm on Facebook groups like SEO Signals Lab, and the best place to stay in touch is definitely through my newsletter, which is seonotebook.com. Okay, guys, you can find all these links, uh, LinkedIn profile, Facebook page, and uh, newsletter website uh, in the description below. Listen to us on Apple, Google, Spotify. Thanks again for your time. Steve, it's a big pleasure. You share a lot of valuable insights. Guys, I recommend 100%. Follow, subscribe because you can learn a lot more and become much better marketer. Thanks so much.